I guess for Halloween's sake, it's been pretty on theme, but North London has been red as it ever was this past few days. Uh, dreadful result if you're talking to a Tottenham fan like me, but man, it's all smiles and all daffodils for uh, for the Gooners fans. But yeah, I mean, overall, I, actually, let me let me leave it to you guys. I'm more curious to hear what your thoughts on the game are anyway. I mean, it's, I mean, Arsenal's just in fantastic form. I mean, they, they, the goal scorers weren't even their top guys. It was, it was Partey who had an absolute class goal. It was Jaka. And then who was the third? It was Jesus on a glory screw up, but yeah, I know what you mean. I get your point. Yeah. Larry spilled that. Like, I, I think as a whole, like as a team, they're just moving quite differently than some other squads. So, I mean, I, I, I wish Tottenham competed a little bit more, but. I, I don't think the scoreline really, uh, is too surprising, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't think I was shocked by it. I think also em, uh, the Emirates is really at Arsenal's back right now. So the fact that they played at home went a long way for like a developing Arsenal team. And yeah, Arsenal has been phenomenal this season. Like it, that's the pure and simple fact. And I think they have looked more convincing than Tottenham in their other performances, just as much as this one. Um, Arsenal style of football too is, is a lot more attractive than what Tottenham have been playing as of late. Um, so that's just gonna, they're gonna have control of the ball. They're gonna kind of take it to the other team. They're gonna be calling the shots and then Tottenham is faced to react. And when Tottenham reacts, it, it it's good enough against certain teams, but, um, when they're forced to react in a lot of matches or a string of matches, I think that's where like the holes get poked in how they set up um, and they can't do it every week. So, I mean, Richarlison did draw the penalty. I thought that was going to kind of sway things in their favor a little bit. Um, just getting that momentum um, equalizing and kind of catching Arsenal getting something in hand without really showing all that much would have went a long way for a Tottenham team. Um, but it just didn't happen that way. And I, I credit the Arsenal fans and the Emirates. I think, I think that's really kind of what pushed them over the edge, gave them the edge on the day. They, Arteta always stresses showing up for the fans in the locker room at that stadium. And I think it's finally getting there. If they play at Tottenham stadium, I think it could be a very different story just as so. So maybe that's kind of what gave, that's the difference maker. Because I think those two teams, if you put them on a neutral pitch with no fans, I do think it's a very even keel um, set up and both teams, it'll, it'll just be a good battle. But that's that's what I would give for my thoughts. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm uh, just quickly, I'll give my two cents, but I definitely agree with what both Jalen and uh, Connor have said. I think this Arsenal side is one we've seen develop over the last three seasons under Arteta when the moments they play really good football. It's now happening on a consistent basis. I think the United result was kind of a one-off. And, yeah, Spurs are still a great side. And I think – I still think that they could have gotten a better result on the day. Definitely going down to 10 men didn't do them any favors, but it was an unfair call in my opinion. So, um, Arsenal are just really good. And and they built, the, the goals they score, like Dale mentioned, there's a freak goal from Partey. And the Jaka goal was actually really well worked – in the buildup. So Jocka was able to pick the ball up and found himself in space and just picked the bottom corner. So, yeah, I don't know. This Arsenal team is definitely one to, for a lot of teams to fear. And it's nothing that I was surprised about in terms of the, in terms of their ability to play against Tottenham and, and them getting a result. Yeah. I don't disagree with anything you've said. It was, from a Tottenham perspective, from Tottenham fanhood perspective, very disappointing result. Um, I mean, I knew going in, that's kind of how the game was going to go. I think there's two teams in the league right now that unfortunately sitting back and trying to counter, just it just won't work. It just is not ever going to be a game plan that's going to that's gonna be super effective. Arsenal, as you said, Jay, they're just moving the ball too well right now. There's too many guys who enjoy having the ball and are playing with too much confidence. And City, as we just took the better part of 20 minutes explaining, are pretty much unstoppable right now in their current form and have so many ways of beating you. But 
I mean, geez, both of the defensive midfielders pick up goals on the day. And I, like I said, Jay's, Jesus worked hard enough and was good enough on the day that he deserved a goal anyway. So if there was going to be a dribbler or a spill that landed at anyone's feet, Jesus is, was deserving of the goal. He, he put in some really, really good work. Um, I, did, I did like a grade of all the players afterwards for the journal. And he was somebody that I was that right away. I was like, man, he's he's got to be towards the top. Him and Saka were just fantastic. But yeah, I mean, the whole and I guess this segues into the rest of the issues that Spurs have been having, but the whole right back dilemma is something that I feel like is becoming more and more of a huge issue. And it's starting to cause issues elsewhere that I think are shared by quite a few people. I mean, it was a bad result, but the the red card was deserved for me. I, I understand it's unfortunate and I understand thinking that the ref made himself too big a part of the game. Uh, you know, I, 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 would, I would understand all that. And it did sort of end the game then and there, kind of took a lot of the sting out of the game, a lot of the edge out of it. But for me, it was it was a red card, harsh but fair. Um, I mean, what are you doing following him right there, making it, doing it right in front of the ref, making it such an easy call, especially when we had really been trying to do so much work to get back into the game. But yeah, huge problem at right back. And it showed today uh, in Champions League against Frankfurt as well. Um, I've been pretty upset with Conte. I know that that's been unpopular opinion on this podcast. We talked about it earlier before, but I've been pretty upset with his stubbornness. Um, I think he has a serious issue in terms of his willingness to make changes for how he thinks that might make him look. If he thinks he needs to make a lot of changes, then that might take some of the sting out of the effectiveness of his game plan. But when he is making subs, he's making very negative subs. Um, this Champions League game today was very gettable and was one we needed to get. Very negative subs. Brings on Ben Davis, brings on Ryan Sassignon, takes off Ivan Perisic, who really has been our best player this season. I, it's, I never agree with taking him off. I get if age plays a factor into it. There's a lot of games at this point in the schedule but the the sub management for him has been I feel piss poor uh and I guess what's sort of the dark cloud over looming everything and creating like a bad mood for this club for me right now is that I just don't feel this type of football sustainable I know you guys disagree because it's worked elsewhere and it is, a, it is a proven game plan with the right players and a lot of it does fall to the players true but to me, this is just like the worst parts of Mourinho all over again. It's a narcissist who doesn't want to admit if he's ever made a mistake ever because it might make him look bad. And we as a unit are suffering because of it. I don't know if a, I don't know if a, a, a stern fisted, terrifying manager is, is honestly right for us at this point. Like, I don't know if a Rushmore manager comes in and helps fix Tottenham. We really do need someone who's going to man managed better than I think Conte has. And and the whole thing with Jed Spence is, is a whole other ordeal, but I don't know. It, it seems like my worries, you, you guys don't think there's big a deal right now. I'm overreacting. I don't think the right back situation is as big of a deal in terms of how you're thrust your squad. You got to watch more Tottenham football, man. I know that I can be dramatic. I know that. Well. I just, I just yeah. feel like Emerson at right back is not the reason why you guys lose games. It's not the reason why you guys didn't win today against it's Frankfurt. A also, big reason Frank, why we lose no, games. it's not. That's not a big reason as to why you don't win it's like games. Seventy-five. Man. That is actually obs- to think winning. that your that your entire performances rely on one dis- one position on, on the field is ridiculous. Secondly. That there's other players that need to be held more accountable, in my opinion. Today, you had some opportunities to score goals against Frankfurt. You did not do them. Kane did not put them away. Son did tee up. And I think in attack, yes, at times they're they're the way they the way they set up and the way they their tactics applied can be as not as progressive. But these are still players that have the ability to string the ball together, and they're not doing it. And more so, more questions can be asked in the midfield. Yes, there was negative subs brought on today, but you guys also have two players and out. in the derby. I, I you guys also have but reach, Kulu, but... Kulu's out and Lucas Mora's out. So those are two players that are struggling with injuries. So it's hard. I think you just lack the depth and bring on more attacking mind players, which I think maybe you have to dive into maybe your under 18s or your 21s to do that. But I don't think the right back position is causing a shockwave to the whole squad. Yes, I understand like the mentality of, of Conte, the narcissism goes a long way. I think I think that is something to be con- we can all be concerned about. That's something that I had concerns when he was linked to United in terms of his man management, the way he um, the way he like acts with 
you know, the club and the board. So those are things that I, I legitimately understand with you and your frustration. When it comes to Emerson Royale and the right back position and Jed Spence not playing, Jed Spence is not a proven player. I know you hate that. You hate hearing that, but I don't think Jed Spence, but Jed Spence comes on and makes a world difference where you're going to start winning games. Yes. He deserves right. a chance. Yes. He deserves the opportunity, but I think there's something there that we're not seeing. And until that, until, until he doesn't, until he plays or until he doesn't play, like, I don't think that the right back position is the reason to all your failures. It's more well, so the players that need to be held more accountable that score your goals and create goals. And yes, Conte's man management can be improved, but for now that should be your main focus and not, not the Jed Spence and not the Emerson Royale positions. I wrote down your points. I feel like I can calmly and confidently rebuke them in the spirit of enlightened conversation. You said Emerson is only one position on the field. I get that. You're right. I would argue, though, in a Conte-fielded team, the wingbacks are a whole hell of a lot more important than just two players. A lot are asked of them, and he repeatedly asks something of Emerson that he repeatedly shows he cannot do. That's where the fans' frustration is. I know Spence not being proven, that was another point. Look, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this comparison as like a gotcha because it's, it's not really the same thing I know. I would argue that Anthony wasn't Premier League proven when Ten Hag brought him in. Ten Hag started him against Arsenal the first game he was at Man United, and then he started him against City the other game. He started him in two huge games. Again, I'm, I'm saying I'm not like trying to compare Era Divisier in the Championship. I'm not like that's also whole... comparing two different quality types of play, like in terms of quality and types I'm of just players. Saying, it's very, it's a very, lo- it's a very off. Proven. It's a very, it's a very poor point in my opinion. It's there's poor, plenty of not poor comparison. Guys who still get proven, get thrown to the fire early on. We brought Steven Bergwijn. When Mourinho brought Steven Bergwijn, he wasn't proven in the Premier League, but we threw him on there and immediately got a great Yeah, uh, but you're comparing an attacking player to, like, an attacking player, there's a lot less risk involved in starting the new player, especially if they're younger. But, like, you don't see young center backs, like, getting, like... I don't know. Kanate didn't get thrown into the Liverpool side and immediately start. It took him a good while to start matches for you're, Liverpool. You're right. I just, I, I still don't think you guys have fully grasped how bad that that position has looked. Like, like Andrew, it's been so much worse than I, you described it. Like, I, it's been yeah. so bad. But you're making it seem. I know that Conte relies on his wing backs, and that's a big part of his system. But it's still not. You're still not holding the players that are in positions to actually score goals more accountable. I think that's where it lies. I don't think it lies in only the the wing backs. The wing if the wing backs aren't play well, the whole squad doesn't play well. No, I think I think that's that's a that's a lame excuse in my opinion for the rest of the players that are on the pitch. Well, I, I, I truly said, believe that. You mentioned player responsibility too, and you're right. They did not register a shot against Frankfurt today. I I probably wasn't giving Frankfurt enough credit. As Jay said, they won Europa League last year. They're a side that knows how to give out big performance. Zero shots for a team with our front three is like unacceptable. That's that's player. I get that. That. That today was absolutely abysmal work from Son. It was abysmal from Kane. And Richarlison, I hate to say it, looks – Richarlison just can't play with Son and Kane. It just doesn't work for whatever reason. Like, I, I thought that it would, I think. But but now that we've seen how important Kulu is, more important than I wanted him to be, to be very honest, because we've looked awful since he's been hurt. But Richarlison, I think, is best suited as a super sub, a very effective one at that, too. And he can come on at, like, the 60th, the 65th, and he can be very effective. But the lineup today was negative. Nobody looked inspired. And and my point is, I guess one of my many points is, like, yeah, I understand player responsibility. And when, when, when the guys suck, I definitely call out for it. But at the same time, it's like Conte puts out those players. Does that maybe show that they're losing a little bit of faith in what he's doing? Is that it's so negative? And they set themselves up to be in such a bad position from from ball kick number one that uh, some of them I think some of them might be getting a little bit of burnout or something because it's just it maybe demands but a, I, maybe so but I also think like other than the result against Arsenal your team has gotten results so I don't think there's an area for them to be kind of I don't think they have the right to be like that because if they're winning games and are successful with getting points then that has a lot more to say about the players than it does about what the manager's doing. Because if a team sets up a certain way, if, if a manager sets his team up in a certain way and those players are asked to do it and they do it and they get results, then what's there to complain about? Yes, you didn't do it against Arsenal. It was a tough game. We, we 
we gave more praise. We didn't do Arsenal. it against Sporting. We didn't look good against a lot of teams. The results have been fine. The football has been bad. Yeah, I know, but, yeah, but it's the same I, football I and that. style that got you to the Champions League. Like Conte hasn't changed his system. Like, and, and it's not always going to be perfect. Spurs are still sitting in a good position in the table. I mean, they frankly they haven't played like they didn't play Champions League football last season. Like maybe that's a factor to it all too. Like they're not used to seeing these other teams, and I think the style that Conte does play anytime you go with a three back, like he goes with the three, four, three or the three, four, two, one, however you want to look at it. I think that, um, that's a, that's like a, it, it is a risky formation of football because you, you aren't in a position to control games because you don't have that many players in midfield. Like it's a very attack heavy and a very defensive heavy, um, setup tactically so like if, if you are struggling in a match it's it's then difficult to kind of then get back into the match if your players aren't willing to do the job so like if that's a system i guess what i'm trying to get at it is to put it simply if your players don't show up on the day in that system it looks a lot worse than maybe if you were in a three five two where you have more players in midfield or even just a simpler four, two, three, one, where you have more players in the midfield, when you ha are losing one-on-one -on -one battles and you're strung out in your formation and your players don't show up, I think that's where it's more obvious where they put in these more glaring performances, like maybe today or Arsenal. Like I, I think that's the do or die Conte style and just that setup of the game itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would still, and I don't, I don't disagree with any of you guys. I think you've all made good points, and that's why I wanted you guys to like go first because to hear a non like emotional perspective is always nice. But free my guy Spence, honestly. Just, just, we need, we need <laughs> I, I'd like him. to see him play. I personally, yeah, I, see it all. I do worry that he's going to look like you a boy in a man's game. You guys are going to see him play. You're going to see him play for for on some yeah. We're going to loan him back to Nottingham Forest for shit's sake at this point. They'll probably take him. Get a yeah. fifth right back. Oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah. So